Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Concept and Lundquist Reverie. Really cool. This is actually a newer version with Aqua G10 uh, and Damascus steel. Uh, these knives are available in many different forms right now. They, the, the, the Reverie has been around for just a little bit. You can get a budget version of it that comes in about 70 bucks. Uh, you can also get the, uh, titanium and S35VN version, which comes in at about 185. Judging by, uh, what concept usually, you know, how they price this stuff out. This is not Damascus steel. It is Damascus and it is likely going to come in at about the same price as the titanium and S35VN variants. Uh, I can't actually see a listing at the time of this recording yet, but my point is, is that there's a bunch of different versions of this. Uh, you can even get it in titanium Damascus uh, for the scale material for something like $350. This is really cool. I want to say this right off the bat. Uh, I like how Concept does their Damascus. I like the pattern on it. It looks really good. It's kind of like a matte finish, sort of a gray, sort of overcast, right? Um, this is most likely like a 9CR, 10CR combination. When it is Damasteel, we know what that is because the Damasteel company uses a proprietary blend. We know that it's PMC27 and RWL34 and it is performance oriented. This is not quite as premium. I mean, when I say most likely 9CR or 10CR brings me to my next point. We don't always know. Uh, the dealers just list this stuff as Damascus. And there are a lot of premium Chinese companies using uh, a, you know, not not like a, you know, junk Damascus. Not like what you'd find on Amazon for $25. That's junk Damascus. It's usually what I've seen is a 9CR, 10CR combination. Whatever. But tell us, please. I, I've heard this echoed in the comments section. Uh, Concept and other companies using this type of Damascus. Tell us what it is and then make sure that the retailers know what it is so that it can be listed. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, I, I don't know why uh, retailers are just listing this stuff as Damascus. We would like to know what the combination of um, compositions are in this steel. That way, you know, it helps people make a more informed decision and it's easier for people like me who are reviewing these products to understand. Uh, I understand that these compositions change a little bit uh, depending on who is doing them and as time progresses, right? So it's not like if they tell us once, we're just always going to know what it is. I want to know based on the listing of the knife what it is in that moment, right? If I'm going to buy it, let's say I'm just a, you know, a, a, a consumer and I want to buy this knife. I want to know exactly what it is that I'm buying right then and there. So just wanted to get that out of the way right off the bat. Uh, I will link this knife and all of its variants right down in the description so you guys can check it out. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex and thank you to Concept for sending this knife to me. Let's go ahead and get a measurement. Overall length of the Reverie, or I'm, that's how I'm pronouncing it. Seven inches. Blade length is coming in at about three. Cutting edge is coming in at about 2.85. Let's just do a couple of size comparisons here. I say a couple, it'll be more than two. Up against the Ontario Rat Model uh, 1 and Model 2, this is definitely closer to the size of the Rat 2. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? There we go. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Very, yeah, nah, nah, nah. the Para 3 is definitely bigger. And then last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade Bug Out. Alrighty, how's the action on this guy? Uh, it's pretty good. Actually, uh, disengagement of that lock bar will absolutely drop the blade. Um, it comes down and contacts your thumb right around the area of the sharpening twill. Not bad, right? Just a little bit of encouragement to get it to drop shut. This is a top flipper, which I, I have to say, these types of knives, I much prefer to front flippers. I think the positioning everywhere else, right? Obviously, you got to get your index finger up here to deploy it. It's sort of a drag and pull motion. Where, where your other fingers are located, you are plenty secure on this thing versus the positioning you need to be in to front flip it, which is more of a cat's paw and there's less, I feel less secure, right? So front flippers are cool, but these top flippers I think work a little, they're not, I don't want to say more reliable. I just, I, I feel less likely to huck it across the room on accident. Um, and it's kind of cool. It's kind of a satisfying, you know, you get your finger up there and you think that's not going to, 
oh, that actually feels pretty nice, right? So it's I, I kind of appreciate that. The uh, lock bar actually has plenty of cutouts and one side is cut like the presentation side is cut lower than the, um, the actual lock side. So that's really nice. It makes it really easy to disengage. This looks like a knife that would be, you know, more like where they do, the design is more design oriented than it is function oriented. So it looks like things might be awkward, like deployment and disengagement, but no, it's actually, <laughs> it's nice that everything works the way that you expect it to, right? I mean, it's, this was second nature. The moment I got it out of the packaging, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. And that's really nice. Um, we'll talk more about this area right here. There's a reason that I appreciate this, but uh, yeah, action is good to go. This knife runs on bearings. I think that's probably obvious. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Had the T8 ready to go there. Uh, the pivot is a T8. These screws here are T6, and then there's going to be at least one more screw underneath here, which is likely a T6. And then there's also the pocket clip screw right there is T6. Not that big of a deal. More screws than what I would consider to be minimal hardware, and some of those are T6. You still shouldn't have that much difficulty taking it apart. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of blade stock thickness real quick. Blade stock thickness. Sorry, I'm going to change that back to, there we go. Uh, coming in at 100 and says 137, it's probably 135,000. So right there, middle of the road for what I usually see in the knife world. All right, let's go ahead and weigh it. So what materials are we looking at here? This is uh, a, they actually, a, I call it aqua. Uh, they're calling it a Tiffany blue G10, whatever. You want to call it sea blue, Tiffany blue, aqua, yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever color it looks like to you. Uh, it looks really cool. I actually really, really like this color. It's very striking. And in person, it's a little bit more turquoise. Like I'm looking at it in my light and on the camera, it's a little bit more blue. Um, what you guys are seeing, uh, in reality, it's, it's a little bit more turquoise for sure. Uh, then we have titanium, a bead blasted titanium, and then of course the Damascus steel, which I am pretty sure is a 9CR, 10CR combination. Wait on this guy coming in at 2.93 ounces, which is great. That means the ratios are very good. 2.93 ounces of weight for three inches of blade, just about right on the money. Um, if you are looking at the less expensive versions of this knife, you're looking at less titanium and more, you know, G10 or micarta, so they'll weigh a little bit less, uh, but these will, you know, at least these variants with the titanium, you're looking at that weight there. Okay, we've done hardware check, we've done the blade scale thickness, we've done, um, did we do carry profile? I don't think we did that. Thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3, it's about the same, maybe a little bit thicker. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3, you can see here, uh, this guy is not gonna be a difficult object to carry. It's actually shorter than both the PM2 and Para 3 in terms of overall length, and in terms of height this way, it's nowhere near as tall. Uh, as the Spider Co Para 3 or PM2, so that's nice. Okay, moving on into the meat and potatoes. Like I said, I really like the look at this, and I, I also like this area here. It's not the first time that I've handled a Lundquist design with this sort of, you know, this area right here. Some, you know, a lot of times, like <laughs> truthfully, throughout the day when I'm using a pocket knife for just normal pocket knife stuff, I find myself holding it like this and making cuts into packaging. And uh, I think that's the reason that this area is right, you know, that, that this is milled like this. It actually provides a little bit of traction while you're sort of pinching the knife on the scales. And uh, I appreciate that. Ergonomically, holding it in the hammer position, it's fine. You're just holding, holding on to sort of a long curved pill body. Uh, the edges have been nicely knocked down. There's nothing here that makes me feel like, oh yeah, I'm definitely locked in and I'm not gonna drop it, but it's fine. It's not bad ergonomically. It's just not, oh my God, hand melting excellence, right? It's just, it's good, it's fine. It's it's what you'd expect. There's not really a whole lot of a guard keeping your finger away from the cutting edge, so you definitely need to be aware of that. While gripping this knife, I would say you can feel the pocket clip a little bit. It's not a shallow clip, but it's not necessarily a clip that's like, you know, crazy, where the tip is pointing straight up in the air, which drives me nuts. 
Um, but you can feel it a little bit. This isn't a knife that I would say, you know, is going to be the most ideal thing for doing continuous work, you know, for long periods of time. But just getting it out, making a simple cut, I would say, you know, it's it's more suited for that. It actually excels at that. A knife that's just easy to get out and make a quick cut and then put away. Overall fit and finish is typical concept, which means very good. Uh, there's not really any part of this knife that looks bad or wonky, um, save for maybe this area right here. The transition of the G10 into the titanium is not perfect right there, but that's pretty nitpicky. I mean, it's cut intentionally this way on the other side because it has to accommodate for a moving lock bar. Um, but I would say, yeah, if there's one goof right there, I don't know how much I really want to nitpick that. That's pretty minor. Um, the blade itself is uh, pretty straightforward, a very typical, almost classic sort of trailing point blade. Uh, we have a flat that carries out about 50% the length of the blade. Um, we have a flat grind down to a reasonably thin cutting edge. It's been sharpened well. This isn't going to be an open L laser beam, but it certainly is far from thick behind the edge for basic EDC tasks such as puncturing and cutting soft to medium density materials like cardboard, rope, rubber, or even wood, it'll be just fine. It'll do exactly what you want it to do. The blade looks good. The final cutting bevel looks good, nice and even, right? Little bit of a smile right back here on this side. Eh, again, that's pretty, that's eh, actually on both sides. Not really that big of a deal. There's a sharpening choil there, so that should not get worse over time. In fact, it should even out over time. I really like the pattern on this. This is a nice pattern. It looks good. It doesn't look foggy or kind of, you know, sometimes uh, inexpensive, like when it's not Damasteel. Well, I mean, any, any any etch can be bad, but a lot of the companies that are working with Damasteel are etching it so that the you know, the etch comes through nice and crisp and clear. Sometimes with some of the less expensive stuff on less expensive knives, we see more of like a TV static uh, kind of um, etch. This is nice and clear. And while it, it doesn't have that super satisfaction or super satisfactory polish underneath, it doesn't necessarily need it. I like all the little, you know, the little circles there. I don't know if we you know, want to call this an Odin's eye pattern. I don't think they can call it that, right? But it, it looks very similar. I like it. It looks good, right? And it should perform fairly well. 9CR, if this is in fact a 9CR, 10CR combination, then yeah, it'll probably perform similarly to like, yeah, maybe like a 440C, somewhere between a 440C and a VG10, something like that. Uh, it'll be stainless, reasonably tough, very easy to sharpen, and it'll hold an okay edge, right? Um, but it's fine. It, it's fine. People are not necessarily buying Damascus steel in this territory for ultra performance. They just want to make sure that it can perform reasonably well and, you know, has a good look to it. That's generally what people are buying. If all you care about is the look of Damascus then go buy yourself some cheap Amazon Damascus. It's not really going to look very good versus stuff like this, and it certainly is not going to perform very well. But if that's all you're after, then okay, right? In this territory, I want Damascus that looks good and has okay performance, right? I'm not going to expect it to perform like a super steel at this price point, right? Uh, you you got to pay more. You got to pay more than what it costs to get re a regular super steel if you want it to also have the look of Damascus or Damasteel and have a premium etch to it, right? It just costs more to make, plain and simple. But uh, yeah, that would be my estimate there. Everything else is fine. You can just barely see the concept logo. And while there are like codes and things on it, it's a little bit harder to see because of the Damascus etch, but you can still see it there. And it, it does pull away from it just a little bit, right? The codes and things just kind of keep that stuff off the blade. Um, the rest of the knife, I mean, the whole thing looks very stylish. This is in particular, like the other versions of the, uh, the Reverie, the Lundquist Reverie through concept, they look, look pretty good. But this one in particular, I don't know what it is. I think it's very specifically the Aqua G10 and the matte finished, uh, Damascus blade that just looks really cool. Uh, this is a pocket knife where, you know, if you were to get this thing out, to open a package in front of other people who like pocket knives, they're definitely going to ask to see it. It's, it's just neat, right? Whether it's their aesthetic taste or not, it's just a cool combination of color and material. Uh, moving on here, 
there is a spot for a lanyard. They got a little lanyard bar back here, which is the best way to do this. You don't have to look at a hole. It's still there. Lanyard people can still attach their things, right? Um, so whatever. Um, we have a titanium backspacer, which is fine. You'll notice that the, you know, that this is all one part of the frame. We just have a scale over the frame, but the titanium extends all the way down to the butt of the knife. The pocket clip looks good, and I wish they had cut it off here so that we just ended right there and just sort of rounded it off, but they kind of came down up and then went flat again, which is okay. In and out of the pocket, it's fine. Carry depth is also good. That's all you're going to see sticking up out of your pocket. Uh, there is an over-travel stop. The lock bar insert doubles as the over-travel stop, but it's also being held in place by the G10 overlay, so that's nice. This has a um, stop pin that is internal and attached to the blade, so there are channels on either side of the titanium frame that allow that... Uh, that uh, stop pin to you know ride through there and then contact either side of the frame on lockout, which is nice. I like that. Um, let's see here. Lockup is coming in at about 35% or so. No lock stick, no pivot lash, nice and smooth. Lockout is completely and totally solid. We have a nice click into the closed position. This has walked over to the right a little bit. I am pretty sure that it's from me flipping it, which is going to happen. If you get a brand new knife and it's centered and then you flip it a few times and it comes off centered, don't send your knife back. That is a ridiculous, I've had a few people mention that they're like, I, I flipped it a few times and it came off centered, so I returned it. What? <laughs> uh, don't return your knife for that. Um, let's just uh, give it a quick, a quick turn and I should be able to get it right back to where it was. There, just fine. In fact, maybe just a slight, just a little bit more maybe. I'm trying to sort of ease into this, right? But usually it's just from you flipping it a little bit. It is not that big of a deal. Um, don't, just don't, you know, freak out and return your knives for that. Get yourself some inexpensive tools and just make a quick adjustment. And then you can lock tight uh, the pivot in place to your liking. I would prefer that it did not come Loctited from the factory. That way, if it is going to come off center, then I go, okay, then I need to adjust it, add some Loctite, wait 24 hours, and it'll be good to go with the action and centering that is satisfactory to me. All in all, I think this is a, you know, a pretty darn good knife. I actually really like, I mean, I don't think it's quite as convenient as like, you know, using the flipper or a thumb stud and just deploying it. Um, but, uh, the top flipper thing is pretty cool and it can still function as a, you know, a front flipper if you want it to. It's just a little bit easier to do the top flipper thing. Uh, but yeah, you know, and, uh, with, uh, the titanium and S35VN variants coming in at 185, this one I'm assuming, right, just judging on other knives that they have, like when they do the titanium and S35VN versions, if they have a Damascus option, it generally is the same price, right? Um, I don't think that's a bad price at all for this. I don't think $70 for the inexpensive variant is a bad price. If you really want Timascus on your knife, honestly, I don't think $350. Concept is one of, if you're like, I would love to have a Timascus knife, but they are so expensive. Concept is one of the lowest priced companies that is offering Timascus. $350 bucks for a pretty decent slab of Timascus on your S35VN knife is really not all that bad. Now, if you don't care for the material at all, obviously you're not gonna see value in that, right? Just letting you know that option is available. If you don't like it, then just ignore it, right? 185 for this, not bad at all. Pretty cool, easy to carry, nice and balanced, pretty fun to play with, good cutting geometry, good fit and finish. Yeah, uh, I think this is a cool knife. Um, it's not like, oh my gosh, it blew my socks off, I've never seen anything like it before. But I think anybody who picks it up is going to enjoy it. And I think generally speaking, uh, it's a good option for people looking for a knife in this territory. Uh, Concept, to my knowledge, does a good job with S35VN. That is probably the best version to pick up. It's going to be the most performance oriented. But if you like Damascus, then go for it. Um, I think that's going to be pretty much it today. This was fairly straightforward. This is a recommendable knife. It'll go on my recommended knives playlist. This particular knife will probably... Uh, end up getting given away on a live stream. So if you are not subscribed and you like to win free stuff, uh, definitely subscribe and check out my live streams on the weekends. 
Uh, that's going to be pretty much it today. Thanks again to Concept for sending this in for me to take a look at. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.